What makes a title sequence? If you have a favourite TV show in mind, could you explain why you liked it? Do you even remember what the title sequence looks like? Well, I'm going to help you explain why a good title sequence is so important, and show a few examples of different types of introduction. So why is a good title sequence important? Because making a good first impression on the audience is vital to the show's success. When a good, well-made introduction is intertwined with a good, well-made advertising campaign, even if the show itself is not great, the show will still succeed, in most cases, because the general public perception of the show is a positive one. Hence, word of mouth and good critical ratings encourage people to at least watch the show for themselves, which drives the attention the show needs for others to check it out. Now with the knowledge of why the title sequence or intro is important, what is needed to make a good one? Although following these steps will not inherently make a title sequence good, that ultimately rests on the creativity of the director or producer, the competency of the crew, the time limit, etc. These will go a long way to help identify key features of a TV show and how they affect the intended audience. Presentation. How is the show presented? How do the text elements overlay on the screen? Presentation is very important if text is a focus for the title sequence, and just in general, as readability and location can drastically affect the narrative, or worse, even confuse the viewer as to what the story is supposed to be. In this regard, the two shows I will use as an example are very well presented in my opinion. Star Trek The Next Generation starts off with the vast size of the universe, then slowly zooms into the Enterprise, with Captain Jean-Luc Picard's monologue about the intent of him and his crew, followed by the credits for the main cast. It's very straightforward and cleanly presented, no unnecessary visuals or dialogue, hence the viewer knows exactly what they are watching and why each episode is usually set in a different location or has a different premise. However, in the case of the BBC's Sherlock Holmes series, the narrative is told through visuals as opposed to literal audio or text. It starts off with a tilt-shifted time-lapse of London's Piccadilly Square, followed by a time-lapse of the London Eye with the title Sherlock. This is an obvious visual representation of the setting. After that, we start to get a look into the mind and thought process of Sherlock himself, as he is connecting items, locations, people, etc. to find out who caused the mystery in most cases a murder, followed by presumably a drip of water onto a petri dish. This represents Sherlock's scientific mind and how he uses science to help him conduct his investigations. Use of mixed media. Is there multiple mixed media elements used? How does it help present the overall narrative? The use of mixed media can have a huge benefit or distraction to or from the message the director intends to convey. For example, art can be used in conjunction to audio to make an animatic style title sequence, setting the mood for a cartoon show. However, if said animatic intro was used on a gritty action show, it would confuse some of the audience as to what the mood is supposed to be, unless that is the intent. If we look at the Star Trek intro, this is an example of very little use of mixed media, to minimise the visual impact which could detract from the narrative. Although the show uses both 3D and live action segments, the title sequence specifically only uses text and 3D models. Sherlock, however, used mostly live action segments, but there is also a use of overlaid written text to show records of one of the more the victims involved. Composition. Where does the director want the viewer to look? What is the scene slash shot trying to portray? This is similar to presentation, but more specifically focused on the way the visuals are presented, rather than the relation to visuals and text. The composition is important because where the viewer is looking and where the director organises shots in order to convey a narrative can make the difference between whether or not the viewer chooses to continue watching past the title sequence, or TV or Netflix for example. In terms of how Star Trek portrays this, the visuals, as mentioned before, are very simple. The use of colour is not much more than the darkness of space with blue text, indicating the vastness of space. With regards to Sherlock, however, most of the shots are landscape based, hence the framing is centred, but there are a few shots that take advantage of the rule of thirds. For instance, towards the end of the sequence, a drop of water is shown on the right of the frame so that the centre and left is available for the credits. Timing. How long does each frame last for? Do certain shots outstay their welcome? Timing is very important when capturing an audience's attention, as having a shot too long or short can be jarring for the viewer, making them question what happened, and making them question what happened there as opposed to focusing on the narrative. Whereas good pacing can draw the viewer in, not letting them get distracted in a sense. With regard to Star Trek, the timing matches the pace of the show, 
slow and methodical. However, in my opinion, the credits go on for too long. They could have been condensed to 20 seconds or so. In the case of Sherlock Holmes, the pacing is significantly quicker to match the pacing of Sherlock's own mind. And in the show, he usually has days, at best, to piece together an investigation that would take the police months, if not years. Double exposure. Can you tell if a green screen is being used? Double exposure is placing two or more images, clips, etc. on top of each other, usually with some amount of opacity on either part, to blend the images or clips together. This can be very useful for transitions, if you have a clip on one location, then blend the clip of another location to visually show the passage of time. In Star Trek, the only instance I noticed was when the Enterprise flies through space which then introduces another one of the cast. However, besides that and possibly the zoom in, there isn't a noticeable passage of time or use of double exposure. In Sherlock Holmes, however, the time-lapse segments show significant passage of time, along with many fading and out transitions to introduce new clips and the use of written text on top of other clips show a heavy reliance in double exposure techniques to represent the merging of information in Sherlock's mind. Message why is the director trying to tell the audience? How well was it executed? Conveying the message in most TV shows is the most important part, as it represents the director's intent and why they made the show in the first place. In the case of Star Trek, this is the sequence's biggest strength, as narrative is clear and concise, as mentioned before, and the viewer knows exactly what the purpose of the show is. The crew of the Enterprise is studying alien life and planets for the benefit of humanity. With regards to Sherlock Holmes, however, the narrative is a lot less obvious. That is not necessarily a bad thing, but to a casual viewer, it would seem unrelated to the show itself besides the location. Mood and atmosphere. How does this make me feel? Does it draw me in? To me personally, atmosphere is the most important part of what makes a film, as the emotions you feel and the effect it has on focusing the narrative is what I remember most when I'm done watching a film. The way Star Trek portrays this is a good example of showing the scale of the universe, hence portraying to the viewer how much space both the crew of the Enterprise has explored and will explore setting the stage for what the viewer can expect from the show, and the monologue also adds both to the realism and the scale of the world building. With Sherlock, the speed of the time lapse, as well as the speed of the transitions, convey the speed of which Sherlock figures mysteries out. The speed and intensity of the music also conveys a sense of urgency to the viewer. Genre characteristics. Can I identify what genre this is? Does it fit or not into what I expect from the said genre? But knowing what genre a show is can help with analysing what makes a show great or bad by comparing it to other shows that succeeded in the given genre, and helps with categorising the show in search indexes. With reference to Star Trek, it would be very good at exemplifying the sci-fi genre, as the franchise basically started it. It is exactly what you expect from the genre, with spaceships, the vastness of space, a plethora of unique alien species, and more. In the case of Sherlock Holmes, it's a similar situation, as the original book the BBC show is based on also basically invented the detective genre, with many puzzles and mysteries to solve, mainly murders obviously, multiple smart villains, best detective in the world, etc. But with a modern twist, hence Sherlock has modern technology such as smartphones and the internet at his disposal. Target audience. Who is the show made for? What does this show include to appeal to them? Target audience has become increasingly important in recent years, with the advent of streaming services fracturing the market and government agencies cracking down on mislabeled or ambiguous content. Hence, learning about the audience you intend to cater to will hugely benefit the content in the long run. It may even become genre-defining. The way Star Trek implements this is very obvious, and much like the other examples, as the language and terminology is clearly not designed for children, and the words are very technical, although there is very minimal mature content that would restrict children from watching it if they were allowed to. In the case of Sherlock, the themes are more adult than Star Trek, including murders, sexuality, drug use, etc., as well as Sherlock specifically using a very technical language, which is supposed to confuse the viewer, that indicates that its target audience is more adult in general than Star Trek's, and not suitable for children at all, in my opinion. So that's the video. If you have any examples of TV shows or content in general that demonstrates a good focus on target audience, or a bad one, then please comment below. I'm interested to read what you know. With that said, thanks for watching and see you soon.